Okay, so this is going to be Pat Cipollone, you know, the uh, White House uh, attorney, the main guy for Donald Trump. Pat Cipollone, I hope you like the video. If you like the video, please do like the video. And if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come with. So yeah, this will be all about Pat Cipollone. He has to go in front of the DOJ. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Now, it can be appealed. It can go to a higher... Uh, judge who will make a decision, but this should move along at a uh, rapid pace and just for specific questions that he doesn't want to answer. So, Pat Cipollone. And let me tell you what I know about him uh, right now. So, 1966, Pasquale Anthony uh, Pat Cipollone was born on May 6th. He is an American attorney who served as White House counsel for President Donald Trump. Okay? Now, Cipollone's father was, and I need to speed this up a little bit, Cipollone's father was an Italian immigrant and factory worker. His mother was a homemaker, and he spent most of his childhood in the Bronx. Then the family moved uh, to northern Kentucky from the Bronx. Now, in 1984, he graduated from Covington Catholic High School, and then in uh, 1988, he graduated as class valedictorian from Fordham uh, University with a Bachelor of Arts in Economics and Political Philosophy. He enrolled at the University of Chicago Law School, where he was managing editor of the University of Chicago uh, Law Review. Now, in 1994, he earned a Juris Doctor, and Cipollone is a Roman Catholic and a founding member of the National Catholic Prayer Breakfast and a board member of the Catholic uh, Information Center. Then, 1991-92, Cipollone was a law clerk for Judge Danny Boggs of the United States Court of Appeals for the Sixth Circuit, uh, Cincinnati, Ohio. And then, 92-93, he served as an assistant to, you know it, Attorney General William P. Barr. 2002, the conservative commentator Laura Ingram credited Cipollone with helping her convert to Catholicism. And he has 10 children. Uh, one of the kids, one of his daughters, worked for as a booker for the Ingram angle, you know, the Laura Ingram show. And he had been a partner at the law firm Kirkland Ellis and before taking over as White House counsel. Uh, and he was a partner at Stein, Mitchell, Cipollone, Beto, and Messinger, where he practiced commercial litigation. His clients included President Donald Trump, uh, Radio Ingram, LLC, and Sony Entertainment. So, and then 2017 to 18, Cipollone's financial disclosure reported an income of $6.7 million. And then in 2022, Cipollone was named as partner of the Los Angeles law firm of Ellis George Cipollone O'Brien and Augie LLP doing business as Ellis George Cipollone. Okay, so Pat Cipollone. Let's see what the cards can tell us uh, about Pat. So Pasquale, what a neat name. If my name was Pasquale, I definitely would go by Pasquale and not Pat. Kind of like Obama, you know, when he was a kid, he went by Barry, but then as he became an adult, he realized the value of um, his actual name. So, Barack. So, Pasquale, Pat Cipollone, what can the cards, how can they clue us in? So, he's going to have to answer some questions, and he's going to have to answer them truthfully, and it looks to me like he wanted to do that at the January 6th, and he just couldn't. And so, once... A, um, a judge, a federal judge, removes those barriers, I think he'll be there. So, but before we do anything, let's have just a moment of meditation. Okay. Pat Cipollone. So, is he going to tell everything he knows without abandon, without holding back uh, for the Department of Justice. Is he going to, is he going to let it all be known? So let's do, um, and you know, he looks like he's had an honorable coming up, but I mean, but he was assistant to Attorney General William Barr. So I don't know. It's all, it's a, is he the real deal? Is he an honest guy? Is he here just to play the game? What can the cards tell us, and will he tell the truth 
And will he will he be part of the major uh, situation that brings Trump down? Pat Cipollone. So we'll do six cards and then another four. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm anxious to get this one done. I want to see what the cards have to say. So Pat Cipollone. What about you? What kind of person are you? And then the last four cards will be, will he uh, dump Trump? Signifier card. Oh, a balance. This is the kind of person he is. So the two of pentacles, this is really finding a balance between the value that you're having to deal with. So that's who he is. He is that fellow who's looking for that perfect balance. What is the challenge to that um, in this context? So the king of swords. The challenge to that is the truth. Swords of Truth, Justice, Rules, and Law, King of Swords. The challenge to that balance that he's taking it to an art uh, with Trump is now the truth. The base of this whole reading then is the High Priestess. So the High Priestess you can think of as uh, someone uh, who has all of the information, all of the good information, and everything it needs to enrich uh, those um, those who come to her for uh, aid. And so that is the basis of the whole thing. And this is truth. This is the law. Okay. This is honesty. The past of this reading then is the four of wands and the four of wands are smallish celebrations so he has had lots of smallish celebrations in his actions for his career coming up in the past that led him to this most ultimate uh, job and then the sky of this reading for Pat Cipollone is the six of pentacles and the six of pentacles again much like balancing these two uh, pentacles here is distributing the wealth distributing the value okay that you uh, happen to be in control of look at that Okay, and uh, the likely outcome of the first part of this regarding who is Pat Cipollone then is this nine of pentacles and just a very, we said it's 6.7 million. So just a very uh, loaded with value, loaded with wealth, a very uh, lush, uh, comfortable position. That's where he is. Okay, now the last four questions. Will what he has to say to the Department of Justice be some major undoing? For Donald Trump. Well, what Cipollone has to say to the Justice Department be a major undoing for Trump? The uh, very self of that question is strength. Look at that strength. So yeah, what he has to say is going to be s substantial. It's in the environment of what? It's in the environment of the magician. Okay, Major Arcana. This is uh, someone uh, who has all the tools at his disposal to make this thing uh, happen exactly uh, right. So the uh, strength that he has is in the environment of uh, things just working perfectly to pull the trick off. Magician. Okay. The hopes and the fears. Okay, so this is the Seven of Swords. These are the fears. This is a theft and betrayal. Truth, justice, rules, and law. You see them right here. And this one crow is running away with three of those points. Truth, justice, rules, law. And, um, and so this is the fear that um, it doesn't work. The likely outcome for Pat Cipollone, and the final question is, is, is what he has to say going to be substantially significant against Trump? is the King of Cups, and this is the King of Compassion and Emotion. So I think it's going to be a very heart, uh, a very um, a heartfelt for him and what he's uh, testifying to. Just to read it again, Pat Cipollone, who is he? Well, he's the guy who's always balancing the value. And he's in the, uh, the challenge to that, what? Right now, it's the truth. And uh, the basis of this whole thing is the fruitful uh, nature of the uh, situation that he's in with the Department of Justice, with the uh, with America. And then the past this with all the little celebrations that brought him to where he is today. And at the very top of this is he has been in the position of distributing that knowledge, that uh, value. OK, and the likely outcome of all of that is that uh, he brought him to the place he is today is being very wealthy, very much in control of a lot of value and being able to uh, luxuriate in that. But then the very question is, it will what he have, has to say be significant against Trump and we get strength and it's in the environment of the magician. So a lot of strength with exactly the right kind of magic to make it work. And the fears with this uh, seven, this um, 
loss of a trail is that uh, the truth, justice, rules, and law will be somehow crippled. Uh, but the final outcome with this King of Cups just tells us there's a ton of compassion, there's a ton of emotion, and he's going to bring it all to the table. And uh, because he has been something we saw when he testified, he testified from his heart until it was someplace that he couldn't speak. And then when he could speak, he did. Okay, that was the Pat Cipollone uh, read. I hope you liked it. So tell me what you thought in the comments. If you have something or someone or some issue that you want me to read about, let me know and I'll do it. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. So this is the Crow Tarot by M.J. Cullinan. I suppose that's how that's pronounced. And uh, they come in a really nice, sturdy box. Um, if you got this as a gift, you feel like, you know, that was a nice gift. The uh, guidebook is pretty interesting. Uh, it has uh, good uh, suggestions on how to use these cards for divination. And then right in the back here, it talks about the artist and the author of Crow Tarot. And it just says that Margot Jones, so that is MJ in the MJ Cullinan, is a Seattle-based artist, writer, mother, and lover of all things magical, especially Crow. She attended Parsons School of Design, yet her unique te uh, technique of telling stories through digital collage is self-taught and has been her passion for over 10 years. And I don't know that's as of when. Um, nature and its creatures are a familiar theme in MJ's work. However, having grown up in the south of Boston, her collages are heavily influenced by the energy of the city. Her work often merges the two worlds. Her path into the world of tarot was a beautiful accident that came out of a difficult time in her life. The process of creating Crow Tarot helped her rediscover her own wings, though at the time she didn't realize how life-changing the project would become. She simply fell in love with the process, the messages, and the feeling uh, each card revoked. The Crow Tarot, MJ's first published deck, has achieved a significant following and recognition with Crow lovers and the tarot community. When MJ is not making art or writing for her Crow Tarot blog, Hmm. She's spending time with her daughter, River, playing in nature, practicing magic, and finding new sources of inspiration. So I love that, to don't know a little bit about the artist. And uh, like I say, the descriptions here are useful in the divination, especially when so much thought is going into the cards. The, the cards themselves are just really amazing. And I love using these cards a lot. They've got a sort of a, an antique uh, kind of patina to the cards. I mean, it's not really a patina because it's fake. But you can see how each card has a little wornness about it that kind of makes them uh, fun to use. And they're beautiful cards. And, you know, what, the reason I do this is for those folks who don't get to see uh, full decks of tarot cards very often. At least this way you get a little preview of some of these cards. And uh, it's a nice way to uh, shuffle up the cards without damaging them. I like to keep my cards in good shape as long as I can. And um, so that is... The Crow Tarot. Well, I'm Mark. This has been my journey through tarot. I'll be doing it again tomorrow if you want to go, so stop on by. Ciao for now. One, two, three. You really make a big difference. Thank you.